In a previous episode, we talked about how Critter Junction acquired another company and had to integrate their VMs with their existing architecture. This had gone well so far, but Critter Junction had noticed some areas where things could be improved, using Google Cloud Persistent Disks to save money and to make the entire application more scalable. Stay tuned to see how. After the big acquisition, Critter Junction had to maintain and ideally upgrade another company's VMs. After using the architecture for a few months, one of the first potential areas of improvement Critter Junction found was that there were many of these VMs disks that were being underutilized, meaning the speed at which the application was requesting data was much slower than the speed their disks could read the data. And they realized that other parts of the architecture were overutilizing resources. So Critter Junction also realized if their growth projections were accurate, they would need to resize their VM's disks as they would very quickly outgrow their current disk size. And on top of all that, they wanted this resizing to happen without any downtime or costly VM restarts, if possible. This seemed like a lot to ask for, but what they didn't know is that Google Cloud Persistent Disks solve a lot of their problems. Let's dig in. Google Cloud Persistent Disks are a durable, high-performance block storage option for cloud VMs. Their main benefit is that they can be attached to or detached from VMs as needed, allowing for long-lived data to persist even where those VMs are started, stopped, or terminated. There are three different types of block storage. Local SSDs are high-performance scratch spaces that are best suited for in-memory databases up to nine terabytes in size. Then there's standard persistent disks. These are network devices suited for large data processing workloads that primarily use sequential IOs. There are SSD persistent disks, which are suited for enterprise applications and high performance database needs that require lower latency and more IOPS than standard persistent disks provide. SSD persistent disks are designed for single digit millisecond latencies. The observed latency is app specific. And finally, there are balanced persistent disks, which, as named, provide a balance between PD standard and PD SSDs. They are backed by a solid state drives that balance performance and cost. Now that we reviewed the different types, let's see how this applied to Critter Junction. Critter Junction mostly uses standard persistent disks, which are good for using as boot devices, persisting data, use as data distribution devices for static website content, and they can be a useful way to replicate data across zones. Unfortunately, the current architecture didn't take much advantage of these features because each PD is attached to a corresponding VM. As we mentioned, this caused the application to underutilize some PDs while overutilizing others. Another concern Critter Junction had is that as their application data and boot volume grows, they're afraid they'll have to reboot the VM, detach the PD, resize it, and reattach it, resulting in scaling limits with downtime. Fortunately, this isn't the case at all. What Critter Junction didn't know is that persistent disks provide scalability because multiple VM instances can connect to content at the same time within the same zone, allowing applications to scale up or instances down as needed to serve data to customers. And better yet, attaching a persistent disk to multiple virtual machines doesn't affect total performance or cost either. Each machine gets a share of the per disk performance limit. Performance scales automatically with size, so you can resize existing PDs or add more PDs to an instance to meet performance and storage space requirements. Each PD can be up to 64 terabytes in size, so there's no need to manage arrays of disks to create large logical volumes. Critter Junction also didn't realize that persistent disks provide nearly unlimited flexibility by allowing you to resize your storage while it's in use by one or more virtual machines, with no downtime. That means they could resize their disks on the fly without interruption. This is all made possible by Google Cloud Persistent Disks being network attached. Since the disks aren't physically attached to the VMs that are using them, you get the benefit of using Google's network fabric, which can deliver more than one petabit per second of total bisection bandwidth. That's a lot of that. 
With all of this new information, Critter Junction went ahead and moved away from assigning one PD per VM. This allowed them to connect more VM instances to their underutilized disks. These instances all read from the same standard persistent disk, allowing the entire application to serve more users. And for the disks that were overutilized, Critter Junction decided to upgrade them to larger disks. And best of all, Critter Junction took advantage of Google Cloud Persistent Disk's ability to resize a storage while it's in use by a VM to do all of this without any downtime. For Critter Junction, Google Cloud Persistent Disks turn out to be a simple, fast, and flexible solution for those needs. So that's a wrap for this episode of Season of Scale. Stay tuned for more about Critter Junction, and remember, always be architecting.